I have no idea where you legends get these kind of questions from, but I'm having a lot of fun solving them. So we've got a GCSE coordinate geometry question, and it's all just writing. That's a red flag. Triangle, HJK is an isosceles triangle uh, with HJ is HK and JK is root 80. Here are the coordinates of HJK. J and K are missing, or well, some part of their coordinates missing. It says M is the midpoint of joke. The gradient of H and M is to find J and K. All right, like I said, the red flag here is they've not drawn a picture for you. So let's just draw a generic picture of our isosceles triangle. All right, so we have these two sides being equal. It doesn't matter if it doesn't match up with the coordinates, okay? It does say HJ equals HK. HJ, HK, the common is H, J, and K. Okay. Ah, yeah, okay. So JK is root 80, so this here is root 80. Which they didn't even simplify it, which gives me an indication that it's probably a non-calculator question. Uh, we have J, which is J and 15. H is minus 4, 1. And K is 6K. We've said M is the midpoint of JK. I don't even know why that's relevant. M is the midpoint of JK. All right, uh, I guess it's relevant somehow. Then the gradient of H and M, oh, that's why. So this gradient is two, bruh. I see. We have two unknowns and we're given two pieces of information, simultaneous equations. Nice. All right. Where are we going to form our two equations? The first one is what they gave me, that the distance between these two coordinates is root 80. Okay? So, how do we write or find the distance between two coordinates? Well, it's basically like forming a triangle. So say this coordinate was 1, 2, and this was 3, 5. To work out that distance, we work out how much we're going across in the x and how much we're going across in the y. To go from 1 to 3, you do 3 minus 1, which is 2. Then you do 5 minus 2, which is 3, to get the change in y and the change in x. And then you do Pythagoras. So you subtract the coordinates and then you do Pythagoras. All right? That's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to take these two coordinates. I'm going to subtract them. So I take 6k and I take j15, I subtract them, and I write it in columns that if there's any double negatives, we don't make any silly mistakes. We get 6 minus j, and k minus 15. But that's my change in x, that's my change in y, so 6 minus j, k minus 5, we do Pythagoras to those. So we're saying 6 minus j squared and k minus 15, squared, doing Pythagoras, they've already told us this, it's going to be this squared, or the root just disappears, 80. Okay? I'm actually not going to do anything with that for now, because I don't want to expand that and just do weird things with it, because then you're going to get two j's and k squareds and j squareds. I like it like this. The next thing we need to think about is this midpoint and that this gradient being 2. So it looks like we're going to have to find the midpoint by adding these and dividing by 2. Yeah, that's how we find the midpoint between two coordinates. We add them. So we get j plus 6 and 15 plus k. And then we just divide by 2. That's my midpoint. The gradient between this and this is 2. To find the gradient, we subtract the coordinates and then we do the change in y over the change in x. Okay? So, here's my coordinate here and here's my coordinate here. We're going to do the change in y divided by the change in x. So, we're doing this y take away this y. So, we're doing 15 plus k over 2 
subtract 1, and we're going to divide by this minus the x coordinate. So we're going to do j plus 6 divided by 2, subtract minus 4, which becomes plus 4. And that equals 2. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do there, what I think we should do, so some students will say, oh, yeah, let's just bring everything into one denominator. I don't think that's wise just yet, just because of that 2 on the right side. My initial thoughts is that we should get rid of denominators. All right, we don't like solving with denominators, so let's worry about that first. So what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, you guys let me know what you would have done in the comments, is we're going to take that divide by this and multiply through. Okay, so I don't want that divide by this. I'm going to multiply through so we get two lots of this. So from there, we're going to have 15 plus k over 2 minus 1 is two lots of that denominator, which is j plus 6 over 2 plus 4, because then I'm going to get rid of brickets. Now, when we do 2 multiplied by this, this is all 1, right? You can put a bracket around this one and the 2's are going to cancel. So we get 15 plus k over 2 minus 1. Those cancels, we're left with j plus 6. Then we get plus 8. Okay, <sighs> can we move the 1 over just to isolate this? So we have 15 plus k over 2 is j plus 6 plus 8 is 14. Add the 1, 15. Then should we times everything by 2? So remember, this we're going to protect. We're going to times everything by 2 to get rid of those denominators. So we get 15 plus k is 2j plus 30. And then we're just going to rearrange. I'm trying to keep as many things positive. Yeah, so I want the k's and the j's on one side. I'm going to bring the 2j here and the 15 goes there so that we keep that number positive. So I'm going to get k. Then that positive 2j, I'm going to move it over, minus 2j is 30, and then we're going to subtract 15. So that's going to leave us with 15. And there we go, we get this crazy simultaneous equations uh, question now. Which actually, because that is a squared, I'm actually just going to have to rearrange for k and substitute it in. Uh, and that's going to work out nicely because the 15s are going to cancel. Dude, who made this question? So actually, I'm going to rearrange this slightly differently. So we get j, so I'm going to minus the 15, so we get k is 2j, and 30 minus 15 is just 15. And now let's do our simultaneous equation. So that k, I'm going to sub in there, we're going to get 6 minus j squared plus, then we're summing in k there, we're going to get 2j plus 15, and then minus 15 squared is 80. That cancels, then we're going to do 2j squared. And we're going to have to expand this as well. 2j squared, 2 squared is 4, then we have j squared is 80. Then here we expand this. There's a quick way to expand squared brackets. We square the first term, 6 squared is 36. Then we multiply these. Uh, 6 times minus j is minus 6j. Then you double it, so minus 12j. Then we square the last term, j squared. I'm hoping you guys are already comfortable with expanding brackets. So here we're going to get 5j squared minus 12j. Then we have to do 36 minus 80, which I'm actually not sure if this is calculated or non-calculated. I've not used a calculator so far, so let's go ahead and not use a calculator for that, which means I'm in trouble, big trouble. Uh, we get 7, 10, 4, 4, 44, but we're doing the other way around, so minus 44. I mean to solve this, bruh, this is long. Okay, so bun the AC method, okay? We're gonna use the oi oi method. 5j and j multiply to give you 5j squared. Now for 44, what are my options? I have one and 44, two and 22, three, four and 11, and that's it. I always suggest that you stick to the numbers closest together first, okay? Now you're saying with the four and the 11, 
Yeah, where would you put the four and where would you put the 11? I'm definitely not gonna put 11 here because then five times 11 is 55. You're trying to make 12. It's just gonna be too big. So if you are gonna do it, you'd most likely put the four here and the 11 here. And this is where the oi oi method comes in. We do the outers multiplied together. Now that gives me 20J and this gives me 11J. Can 20 and 11 make 12? The answer is no. So this option does not work. So I'm gonna use that exact same logic with the two and the 22. So I'm gonna put the two here and the 22 here. Five times two gives me 10J and this is 22J. Can 10 and 22 make minus 12? The answer is yes, if you have minus 22 plus 10. So we get plus and then minus. Nice. Now, the question, I've rubbed it out now. If I remember correctly, it did say J was negative and I'm praying that was correct because I'm gonna get two solutions here, but I'm only going to use one of them, all right? So I have either 5j minus 22 is zero, or j plus two is zero. Because this is gonna give me j is minus two, but that's not allowed because j will, oh wait, no. Oh no, it said j was negative, so that's the one we do want. Usually, like, these things are positive, right? Anyway, j is minus two. I guess they wanted you to keep it as a nice number. Here you'd get 5j is positive 22, then divide by two, which is not allowed as j is less than zero. So we get this. And now we can get k by subbing to here, 2j plus 15. So you get minus four plus 15. k is 11 and that is your solution. This would probably be seven marks in the exam if they were to ask in the GCSE paper, but whoever sent this to me, it looked like it did come from a GCSE paper. Um, the, num the question number was 22. So if you guys can let me know where it came from, uh, that would be cool. But guys, incredibly tough GCSE question, but if you learned something, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button, it expands the reach so that more students can get access to this. Subscribe for more maths content. If you're interested in my GCSE courses, there is a link in the description. And if you wanna join the Learn Gang on Reddit and submit your own questions uh, for my community to help you and potentially I'll make a video as well, link to that is in the description as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.